So this video is going to show some pictures of the initial build of my custom Ruger 1022. The, uh, the custom build is uh, based on a Boy, Boyd's Tactical stock. I got the unfinished version and I finished it and it's based on uh, uh, the build is based on a kid 20 inch tapered uh, match barrel. So we'll talk about what the build looks like and what the stock the bit of the stock and then we'll talk about how uh, the finishing of the stock went. So the build looks really nice. I'm very happy with the way it looks. The the stock is nicely contoured so that you can you can hold it up uh, either offhand or and use your uh, ring finger and your little finger to to pull the stock into your shoulder. Although you don't really need to do that on a 22, but to give you some tension, you could do that. It's got two swivel studs, so you could both sling it and have a bipod. And it's got, of course, one rear swivel stud. I, I like the fact that it's got the swivel studs in case you want to want to put a sling on it and carry it around. Some of the other 1022 stocks out there don't have swivel studs, which make them look cool and pretty cool if you're uh, if you don't mind carrying your rifle in the event you'd ever want to go out and use it, say, uh, further away from your car than you want to actually carry the gun. As far as the barrel, the barrel looks very nice. That the tapered effect is subtle. But uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I got the uh, bead blasted version, uh, and I really like the finish on the bead blast. As far as the receiver and the barrel fit into the uh, into the Boyd Tactical stock, I I really am disappointed. There's there's a little bit of wiggle that you can uh, if you, if you push the barrel on the fore end, it'll wiggle a little bit. The barrel is free floated, but it's kind of the barrel is leaning off to the right side of the free float channel of the barrel channel and I think that if I got a full on bull barrel the bull barrel would actually be pressing up against the end of the fore end uh, and really at the, you're supposed to be able to free float the barrel in this stock uh, which is my understanding but uh, that's that wouldn't be the case if I had a full bull barrel like I said the the action and the barrel kind of point a little bit right in the stock. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in that. I didn't do anything in terms of betting the action or the barrel. I might try that in the future. Uh, I'm going to give it the, give it an accuracy test first. Uh, as far as it looks, it looks pretty good uh, overall. I've got a uh, this is a Leopold target scope that my brother lent me on top of the on top of the the gun, and it's got just cheap ten, uh, 22 uh, scope rings and the stock Ruger scope rail. I'm I'm wondering if that's going to be a weak link in the system, uh, but again, the accuracy test will hopefully flush any problems with that out. Moving on to finishing the, the stock, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the finished job on the stock and I'm thinking my 8th grade wood teacher would give me about a B minus. I was pretty unhappy. So I got off on kind of the wrong foot with the, with the stain I chose to use on the stock. I, I was going to, I chose a, a Minwax Ebony. Uh, I think it's Ebony stain. Uh, it's just basic, a pure black stain. And I put it on, and it looked kind of gray, and I hated it. And then I tried to sand it off, which was a huge mistake. Uh, so that came out kind of uh, some basic principles of woodwork. The first thing that bit me was I didn't stir up the can of finish after I after before I put the first coat in. And there was a lot of solids on the bottom of that can. You know, I guess the darker the stain, the more solids is my my. Uh, it should be obvious anyway so that was my first pitfall is I didn't stir up the stain really good uh, the second thing was that I you know I really should have tested it on another piece of wood to see how how it how it took to that wood um, before I go went ahead and put it down on the stock on this stock uh, another basic concept and you know basic art is that you want to start with uh, the lighter colors and then work darker so uh, since I started dark, uh, that was, you know, I was kind of stuck with what I had because it's really hard to go from dark to light. Um, you're basically hosed if you want to change it. Now, uh, as far as the stock went, it, I only did minimal stand, sanding before I started out. And then, of course, I wanted to take that stain off, so I did a lot more sanding afterwards. Um, minimal standing to, to begin with. And then 
the wood was really very porous. It was very thirsty. It, it sucked up the the stain on the ends of the of the laminate where the where the grain was exposed. I mean, it just pulled it in um, incredibly. Uh, it's just an incredible amount of stain went in, in into that those those pieces. So it you know you get you get really dark on the uh, on the end grains and then kind of you know not dark on the <laughs> it didn't really take to the to the side pieces. I thought it really looked bad. Uh, now that that was a little bit better af after I put coat after coat after coat of stain on this. Um, I won't go into the details because I went. I went dark and then I sanded it to try and go light and then that wasn't working so I went dark again. It came out looking like a like a piece of uh, kind of a black walnut which I thought was pretty cool. Then what I did is I switched over to a uh, polyurethane finish to give it a clear coat. Uh, I cut the finish. I did two-thirds finish and one-third mineral spirits to try and I uh, get it you know low vi viscosity so it lay out nice and smooth and that worked pretty good um, it was really I, I had the stock uh, I had a piece of fishing line strung around the rear swivel stud and I had it hanging so I could I could work on the stock without without having to touch it or set it down and that was that worked pretty good uh, with the stain because you know you put the stain on and you wipe it off 10 or 15 minutes later but with the clear coat I had a real problem with drips um, after you do two or three or four coats you know you start being able to put a lot of stain down on a, any single coat and then uh, as it sat and dried you get these drips and uh, you can try and cut them off with the razor blade and and sand it smooth and then uh, and then put more stain down and you know I got some drips and I uh, I was able to do that with a few of the drips and after a while I just gave up because uh, you know as I was doing that I did different drips and it was a big mess I, I uh, so I'm really unhappy with the finish there's a very real possibility this stock will uh, will meet a bottle of oven cleaner to strip everything off and then uh, then meet a, uh, a a can of black spray paint but we'll we'll see what happens you know I'm I'm comfortable enough with the stock I won't be embarrassed to take it to the range but uh, I don't, I'm not gonna let anyone get a real close look at it uh, so anyway I I really wish I, I, I did a I bought the unfinished version as a cost savings I had some store credit at Midway and I and so I was able to get the stock pretty cheap as far as new money coming out of pocket. Uh, in retrospect, I wish I just would have spent the extra money and bought the uh, pre-finished stock. Uh, that would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of heartache. Uh, I guess to wrap it up, you know, visually this, uh, this custom build rifle looks very nice. Um, the stock the stock, the fact that I had to finish it, uh, which I brought on myself, was uh, kind of unpleasant, uh, and I don't—I'm not really happy with the way the the rifle fits in the barrel channel, uh, the, well, the barreled action fits into the, the the barrel channel of the stock. We'll see if that's a problem or not as we go out and accuracy test it. Um, the barrel installed uh, relatively easy. I've got a got a video of that on my on my on my channel. Uh, took me a couple tries to get the extractor timed basically because I, uh, I really wanted to believe that if I used a level I could get the extractor timed um, which is how Kid described it in his instructions and uh, I found that to just not be the case. Uh, so uh, this video will be followed up with some more video of uh, this gun being accuracy tested uh, and we're going to use a Savage BTV LSS, one of the heavy barreled Target Savage 22 rifles as a control to compare this gun, this custom 1022 build against the known rifle that is has fairly decent accuracy. I mean, that, that video will be forthcoming and... Uh, I want to thank you for watching this, and uh, if you're watching the series in this rifle, thanks for watching the series.